What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about fast moves and charge moves. This is definitely gonna be a video helping out new battlers coming to Go Battle League, or maybe there'll be some information in here for all you veterans. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your community. Um, but in today's video, we're gonna talk about fast moves, what fast moves you guys should be using on certain Pokemon, what fast moves do. We're gonna break down turns and energy and damage and give you guys all that information. We're also gonna be talking about charge moves where you guys can find what charge moves do, how much energy they cost, which moves you guys should be using on your Pokemon. And then finally, I'm gonna break down how you guys can count fast moves from your opponent's Pokemon so you know when they're gonna be getting to a charge move. So maybe you can do a sacrificial swap or maybe you know what move they're throwing so you can shield or not shield based on that information. First up, we're gonna talk about fast moves. Now, when it comes to fast moves on your Pokemon, one of the places you guys can look up is in the ranking section. This will give you um, an in-depth look and recommended moveset for your own Pokemon. So if we take a look at Galarian Stunfisk right here, we can scroll down and see that it's fast moves of Mudshot and Metal Claw right there. Now, PV Pokes recommendations, I would say, are 99% reliable. Sometimes there's those 1% situations where a different move in a certain meta can perform really, really well because no one expects it. Fire Blast, Alolan, Marowak, for example. When in doubt, go with PV Pokes recommended moveset. You guys really can't go wrong there. Like I said, it's just niche 1% um, variability when it comes to different moves. Um, so now, okay, you may be saying, great, I have options here of Mudshot and Metal Claw on my Galarian Stunfisk. Um, PV Poke recommends Mudshot, but why is that? If we head up to the top right here, the three bars, you guys can actually head to the moves section. This is going to give you an in-depth breakdown of what each individual move does. We're going to talk about the damage, the energy, the turns, the energy per turn, the damage per turn. This is where all the nitty gritty behind the scenes information comes and why certain moves are stronger than others on specific Pokemon. So what we're going to do is talk about obviously damage. That's going to be how much damage output the move will do. This will vary based on one, your Pokemon stats and two, the typing that the Pokemon you're facing off against. So just because um, Air Slash right here says nine damage doesn't mean it's always going to do nine damage. If a Pokemon is a steel typing, it'll resist that. So that will be lowered. So always take this with a grain of salt, but this is a great information place to start. The energy right here is going to be how much energy you get um, from that move. So if you do one air slash, you do nine damage, you get nine energy. This contributes to your charge moves, that big circle on the bottom. Every time you do a fast move, the energy goes up and there's a wide variety or difference in fast moves that gain more energy quickly or gain energy less. Same with the damage, more, more damage or less damage. Now the turns. A turn is a half second duration. So if an air slash right here is a three turn move, Move, that means it is a 1.5 second move. If we filter it right here by turns of lowest, maybe something like Bite. So a lot of Pokemon have Bite, maybe a Lolan Raticate or a Lolan Muck. That is a one turn move, meaning it's gonna be a half second. So every half second, you're able to do a fast move. So every half second, you're gonna be getting two energy. The damage per turn is exactly that. How much damage versus how many turns? So if we go ahead and filter it by damage per turn, the highest damage per turn move in the game is gonna be Razor Leaf. That's why Pokemon like Shadow Victory Bell are so tough to deal with if you don't have a hard counter because Razor Leaf is the hardest hitting fast move in the game. Same goes for energy per turn. This is going to be how much energy you guys get for the, the turns of the move. So lock on, for example, something that we see on Reggie Steel is the highest energy per turn move in the game because the turns um, is every half second you can do a fast move and every half second you get five energy. So that means you get five energy per turn. So what this tells us is we can filter it by, do we want our Pokemon to gain energy very quickly? Maybe our Pokemon has access to Thundershock, which is a 4.5 energy per turn move. That's on the equivalent of Thundershock, Psycho Cut, and Mudshot. These are definitely behind lock on the second highest energy gaining moves, which means you can spam charge moves more quickly. So if you have an option, if we do electric right here, um, we can filter it by electric. And if we have an option of electric and our Pokemon has maybe Thundershock or Spark, right? Thundershock is gonna be providing us 
4.5 energy per turn, which means we're going to get to charge moves more quickly. That's on a Pokemon maybe like Magneton, where you want to have that Thundershock because you have access to Magnet Bomb and Discharge, which are low energy moves. So you can hit your opponent harder and more quickly with those charge moves. All right, same goes for the charge moves when it comes to the recommended move set. Be sure to check PV Pokes rankings and the recommendations with that move set. But every charge move does different damage, costs different energy, and sometimes has different effects on the game. Have you ever seen a Pokemon get a boost after using a charge move? Maybe Power Up Punch, which increases their attack. And you may be wondering, well, how much attack did they get? Did they just get one attack or what does that equate to? We're gonna break that down here for you. What you guys can do is filter from fast moves to charge moves right here, and you guys will start to see all the different charge moves in the game. The damage, the energy, the damage per energy, and the effects. Some of them have effects. So Acid Spray, for example, has a 100% chance to lower your opponent's defenses minus two. But what does that mean? You can head over to the battle section and start to simulate what that actually does to a Pokemon. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna choose the charge move of Acid Spray on Alolan Muck. I would still recommend Sludge Wave, but for this example, we're gonna see what Acid Spray can do to a Skarmory. So what did it say before? It said minus two, right? So the Acid Spray said it's a 100% chance to give minus two defense to your opponent. So let's see what that does right here. If we take a look at Skarmory's defense right now, it's 163 which is really solid that's why it's a bulky pokemon but if we're going to give it minus two look what that did to the defense it now dropped it to 108 that's basically 60 defense gone which makes skarmory so much weaker when it comes to charge moves but what does that mean in terms of damage how much more damage would this muck do so if we take a look um, at the skarmory versus alolan muck right here without the stat modifier lowering the defenses so landing an acid spray dark pulse will do 38 percent of skarmory's health but what happens happens if we give it minus two defense. And what we'll see now is that Dark Pulse does 68 damage instead of the original 46. So that is how that stat modifier applies it. It does massive damage because the defenses are lowered. Again, heading back to the charge moves, you guys can filter it by different typings to see what options there are in terms of those move sets. So you can determine on what Pokemon, what move you'd like to use. So you can see that Blast Burn has very high damage per energy or Flame Charge has a 100% chance to increase your attack by one. So this is a great way to start to understand how much damage these moves could potentially do and how much energy they cost and what effects they have on the game. Game. And again, a little pro tip here, if you want to know specifically how much damage a move um, will likely do to a Pokemon, because this is all determined based on still the stats, the defenses and HP that Pokemon has, but this is a great ballpark to really narrow it down, you guys can do a battle simulation. So let's say you're using a Zoomerl and you want to know how much damage will Hydro Pump do to a Galarian Stunfisk. You guys can scroll down right here, click on the little circle that says HP right there, it'll say Hydro Pump, and it'll tell you to do 125 damage or 74%. This will slightly vary again based on the defenses um, that the Pokemon has or the attack that your Azumarill has, but this is a great ballpark knowing that, okay, about 75% of Galarian Stunfisk's health will be taken away after I use a Hydro Pump if it lands. Same goes for Ice Beam. Ice Beam will do 26.9% or 45 damage. That key in itself will allow you to determine should I shield or should I not? Does my opponent need to shield this charge move or does it not? That's gonna open up doors for you in terms of successfully calling um, their moves or successfully giving shield baits, maybe going for an Ice Beam first because you know that Galarian Stunfisk is gonna fear the hydro pump and then going for the hydro pump after to land it because they may have wasted a shield on an ice beam so what we're going to do now is teach you guys how to count fast moves it's definitely an essential skill if you guys want to start climbing in the rankings and getting better in go battle league being able to count fast moves and know how many fast moves a given Pokemon takes to get to their charge moves is an essential skill to develop. Now, I'm gonna reference you guys a fantastic creator. His name is Seven Even Please. Um, he makes amazing graphics for all leagues with all the meta relevant Pokemon, giving you guys a listing of how many fast moves it takes to get to their given charge moves. And I'll pop that up right here. Um, you guys can find him on Twitter, link down in the comments and description. But if we take a look at Azumarill right here, Azumarill has access to three charge moves and only uses one fast move because Rock Smash is not a viable move currently in the meta. 
Bubble is gonna be its fast move. So for Bubble, it takes five bubbles to get to an Ice Beam, six bubbles to get to Play Rough, and seven bubbles to get to Hydro Pump. But how can we know how many bubbles it's doing? Quick interruption right here. I forgot to add this in while I was editing, but you guys can know what fast move your opponent is doing based on the visual animation coming from that Pokemon. Every fast move has a unique animation. And as you guys grow and develop as battlers, you will start to know that, okay, this thing, this fast move coming from Azumarill is bubble because it looks like bubbles same thing with like mud shot or air slash or dragon breath etc you guys will start to learn that as you play if you want to know what they actually look like for yourself try pokemon that you guys have in your own inventory go against the team leaders and know the fast move okay this is air slash what does it look like let me go fight the team instinct leader you use air slash you're like okay that's what it looks like well what i want you guys to focus on and we will zoom it in here for you guys while i'm talking is the animation of a zoom roll so if we look in at a zoom roll every Every time it does the animation and throws the bubble, that is one fast move. So what we're gonna do is play it back and now count them together. So we're gonna see one, two, three, four, five, there's Ice Beam, six, there's Play Rough, seven, there's Hydro Pump. So they have enough energy. They just got eight in as well. They have enough energy for Hydro Pump, but because they didn't click on their charge move, I throw the Brave Bird and I'm looking to swap now into a Zoomerall to catch their charge move because they weren't throwing it right away. So let's go ahead and play that again, just so you guys can see. You guys can learn this through your own Pokemon as well, if we're using our own Azumarill actually. So if we go right here, um, what you'll see is the charge move is gonna be coming through. It's likely gonna be a Hydro Pump or Ice Beam. We're not gonna shield. It's gonna be a Hydro Pump that's fine resisted. What we're seeing is one, two, three, four, five, six, we're at a play rough. Just like that, you guys can learn to count not only from your opponent, but from your own Pokemon. That way you can learn how much energy it takes to get to charge moves and why it's so important when you're using your charge moves and maybe the Hydro Pump is the one that threatens that Galarian Stunfisk to not just build up to Ice Beam doing five bubbles and then throwing Ice Beam hoping to get a shield because your opponent, if they're counting correctly, will know you only did five bubbles and not seven, therefore they don't need to shield. This is why you guys gotta build up to the Hydro Pump Make sure you do seven bubbles and then go for the ice beam to shield bait. And that's all it takes to learn how to count fast moves. First, it's a knowledge base on how many fast moves it takes, which you guys can reference to the graphics from seven even. And then it's practical application, counting, learning through that aspect. You guys can take your own Pokemon into battle, maybe against gym leader, um, team leaders and practice counting the moves because every Pokemon has an animation that will cycle for every fast move it does. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought about this guide. Was it very helpful for you? And again, be sure to share this with your communities, especially for players who are coming and new to Go Battle League because this is some great information for those who are just starting out. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.